Hello there, I'm Max James Louis, and I live in South Wales in the United Kingdom. And <clears throat> I have been um, engaged in a struggle um, against the South Wales NHS mental health uh, department for the last almost the last 15 years um, you know who are a bunch of complete hooligans um, who came and kidnapped me when I was 23 um, taking me from my home in a police car um, um, and detaining me for six months um, in one of their so-called hospitals um, and subjecting me to complete and utter agony um, in a way that was so shocking and so painful so destructive that it left me an invalid for the next um, 12 or so years well, but in fact, a lifetime, you know, um, relic of what I was before they came and jumped me um, in the night or in the day um, and they... <clears throat> Followed up their six months of utter hell, um, totally unnecessarily inflicted devastation on a very, very healthy, promising, ambitious young man uh, with over a decade of compulsory little get togethers with the, the rapists who had um, done this to me. Um, just for the sake of, you know, concern about my mental health. Um, <clears throat> um, so, you know, this is like, like living in a war zone for your whole youth and having your whole youth stolen from you, supposedly for your own good. And they have not they have not issued a formal apology or or um, admission of wrongdoing. Um, they've been in complete denial for the last fifteen years about what they were doing to me and the nature of my own feelings and the impact it was having on me. And you know I've had no compensation and I've only had a I haven't even had a lifting of the diagnosis but a slight a slight movement towards altering their their opinion of me you know about about two about two years ago which it it meant a lot you know, just to have a little um, loosening on my chains. Um, but all they really did at that point was give me the additional diagnosis of autism, which... I accepted 
you know, very forbearingly, as I've been extremely forbearing for the last 15 years. Um, not because I believe in it, because I have utter contempt for them and all their pseudoscientific, demeaning, derogatory labels. They're slanderous, libelous labels, which completely ruin the confidence and reputation and prospects of a young person, particularly if they're already in a vulnerable state. And Um, yeah, yeah, so I tolerated it as usual. Should the patient be, you know, tolerating their health treatment for 15 years when they are absolutely outraged all the time? Is this mental health treatment for me or is it for them? Is it for them they get the enjoyment of picking on a young man? Because that's how it seems. Because I don't get anything out of it. I get, I I get the patience of a saint. I get I get the I get the privilege of trying to develop the patience of a saint. Um, and you know, still, I've got nothing out of it whatsoever. They did not improve anything. They stole 15 years of my life, of my youth, and over 95% of my health, my strength, my robust vigor, and my, my, my manhood, my... everything apart from basic subsistence and I only scraped through with this much intact by fighting like absolute hell not just for my physical integrity or freedom, or official dignity, which I haven't, you know, obviously I haven't, I've, I've, I've only scraped, you know, a little bit of that in that they have not been threatening me as much or hassling me as much for the last two years, but they're still out there. And I just received, you know, unwanted phone calls from them last month um, and you know over a few reasonably civil emails although which I was not particularly keen on engaging with in the first place but over a few civil emails and you know, I get I get reminded again that you know they have a they have a duty of care which means that you know I can't decide if I remain out in the public, but they can come get me anytime, pretty much anytime they want. Um, and lock me up in one of their modern um, hospitals, which is basically just a whitewashed, you know, little dungeon, which you can't get out of, not allowed out of. Terrible food. One of the most in things important to both to physical and mental health, and no internet access, no 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 phones, no pictures because you know for the for the, for the um, concern for the privacy of the patients, no pictures to be taken in these wards. No, 
Uh, it's it's not to protect the star from accusations of you know running a you know a little hellhole you know um, which you know the public you know does not even have um, their gaze into so that they cannot so that they cannot you know um, um, even see and recognize the suffering that's being inflicted. And the atrocious, you know, lives that are being inflicted upon generally totally innocent and otherwise potentially, you know, healthy and much, much happier human beings. Um, You know the, the demoralization that is inflicted upon people in these so-called, you know, hospitals, um, places which are supposed to reform the characters or you know improve the mental health. Instead, they are places of utter demoralization inflicted, and you know they're what what you would describe as a degradation ritual. Where people are forced to accept their feelings mean nothing, or in fact they're all pathological. Their characters mean nothing; they're all pathological, and the only thing that matters is taking these little, these little poisonous, poisonous capsules, you know, very, very conscientiously, regularly, you know, um, fretfully, uh, every morning and night. Um, which, you know, these are God, these are everything, this is beauty, this tiny little poise, pure, pure poison, which makes you feel absolutely terrible your whole life, you know, suspending you in a state of utter depression and, um, sickness. These are God, this is beauty. Everything about you, it's a worm. It, it's a million times inferior to this tiny little plastic um, poison pill, which they're so kind and such, they're being so care, caring, you know, they're, they're being so dutiful, you know, um, you know, stamping their boot on your head with this little tiny pill attached to the bottom of their soul. Um, this... This is what it's like in these places, particularly for those like me who inspired to an intellectual life. And yes, of course, no photos allowed in these places. Yeah, for the privacy of the patients. Okay, and so there's, but, but, but the point is that, you know, there's no, the food is terrible. You're stuck there. There's no internet access. This is totally unnecessarily cruelty, not care. And and they wonder, and you, you would wonder why somebody's mental health would deteriorate, and you know why a person would be driven insane or be insane, you know, in these places, as if it's the person's fault. No, of course it's not the person's fault. It's the system which is perpetrating criminal fraud in open daylight. And these people are isolated from society, they're subject to it, and their indignation is pathologized. So, this is a modern day gulag that goes on all around the country, and all around the West, all around the world. Um, and it's been going on for decades, and it's been getting worse almost every year. With the number of sectionings, number of incarcerations increasing almost every year, and doubling, you know, each decade, approximately. Um, and these people are essentially isolated from the social, social body for very little, you know, reason particularly except they walked into their own doctor's office or their parents led them into it when they were naive enough to, to go to get to, to, to be to, to be dragged along 
And then they just got separated from the social body for no particular reason because, you know, they were there, you know, and, um, you know, they said a few errant words which, you know, tick the wrong boxes of the doctors. And then from that point on, any the minor the minor maladjustments that they did have to be to get in the first place are multiplied by a systematic treatment which does exactly that it's like feeding a virus you know you know some kind of i don't know yeast or something um and but the yeast, the, the 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 food for the virus, is the cycle of abuse inflicted in the name of care, sanctions, rights being taken away, freedom being limited. So the, so we have nothing to do, no no nothing, no no expression, our dignity in relation to rest, rest society being reduced, an opportunity to reassert. And to recapture that being taken away, causing naturally an increased level of anger and indignation and separation from society, um, and that's just how it goes. Um, and um, like I say, I have been subject to this for the last 15 years and only by being extremely patient, forbearant, tolerant, self-effacing, compromising self-destructive, self-annihilating. Did I manage to come out of it as well as I have and to still be out here? Because if I was, if I was actually saying what I feel and what I think, you know, um, then that would have been taken as a sign that I was becoming more ill. They would have then increased their sickle treatment, which would have made me more ill. Then I would have responded in the same way. They would increase their treatment. And my life would be ruined, you know, about, you know, 50 times faster than it's been ruined this way. Um, so, for the entire first 12 years that I was in their hands, I was absolutely screaming inside, utterly distraught in every way, um, you know, saw my life being stolen, flashing before my eyes, worse than flashing, you know, just being my, you know, my, my Mona Lisa being ripped to shreds, you know, um, for those years and all the other, you know, all the other great artworks and exhibits that I had to share with the world, all the great buildings, you know, being torn down one by one over that 12 years period, you know, so, you know, Paris was, you know, turned back to the stone age and um and yet you know i held that all in and you know for the and then for the last two two years three years since i i was trying to make my escape you know my ascent you know a gradual very very long run up patient run up build up then trying to make my escape my ascent 
um, in which I begin to come out, become, begin to open up and dare to express myself. Um, you know, on in in the aspects I can on social media, um, and trying to confront the psychiatric profession uh, on the internet. Um, um, but, you know, not without, you know, continued fear of basically, you know, physical violent retaliation for, 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 for criticism leveled at their care, their, their care, um, you know, verbal criticism, them coming down like a tank on me and destroying me, raping me to death, because that's what we're talking about here, um, pretty much, or worse than death, you know, um, because... There are lots of states worse than death, and you, you get to see them and take them in, you know, very well um, when you are um, an involuntary mental patient. Um, so, so, these are barbarians that we're dealing with. They're monsters. They're psychopaths. They're soldiers in white coats waging war against their own most vulnerable and sensitive members of their own population. That's what they are. They are a, a, a team of soldiers, a battalion of soldiers, raping, pillaging and murdering the, their own home native populations. Um, and the most sensitive, the nicest, most vulnerable, young, young and most promising members often, of the, the, their own native populations. That is what they are. Let's call them a foreign army. I don't know. Are they a foreign army or are they just, I don't know, a gang of, I don't know, what, what drives them? Well, <laughs> I only get the, I get the, you know, I'm at the front line. I'm getting the I'm getting the results of whatever gave rise to this this you know social plague called beach recall psychiatry. Um, and I can I can only report the effects, the front line effects that this has that has. Um, Um, and um, so being you know, the point is that I'm still, you know, concerned. I'm still in trouble, you know, with these people, because they won't issue an official apology. They won't official. They won't issue official admission of guilt. They won't completely take their claws out. The law, you know, I've been screaming on social media for the last, you know, um, you know, year or year or two now because I've been, you know, upping my my ascent, my escape tra trajectory, my reassertion of my own personality and my own feelings and the justice of the situation. I want justice. I don't want to be a dog let off my leash. I'm a man, or I was a man, not just equal to these, but I was better to start with. Because they had already been, you know, acting like a bunch of Chimpanzees, uh, you know, ruining lives before they got to me, and I had I hadn't been done do, doing that, so I was already better than them to start with, at least an equal. And now that this this is what they have done to me for the last fifteen years, so I want you know not just a dog you know with his leash leash a little loosened, but I want full reinstation of my humanity, of my dignity, 
my equality before the law and my usual rights and freedoms and I want these people essentially they they ought to be at my mercy um, that is not the main thing for me because I want to do what I can do in my life I want to be free and I'd like to you know build something and be positive rather than being destructive that's always been my my attitude I didn't like that but you know um, so I would rather potentially have you know financial compensation and simple admission of error and restoration you know from that and that would be the first the, the 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 first the thing that I would ask for but I wonder when I should ask for more you know because um, by rights I think by the justice of the, sort of the situation you know these people should would have would 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 be considered criminals um, very very bad criminals um, um, so I will push that I will I will call them criminals at least until they begin to compromise and begin to actually make rest basic restorations Um, and I've not contacted the police because I was just one completely isolated individual who's, who had a whole team of the whole government, basically agents, the, 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 the NHS staff, a whole team of them, you know, keeping him down once they'd already beaten him up, essentially, all these years. So... I was not in a state to fend for myself. Um, because these were people who were keeping me down. And I had no trust in anything. I, I was totally gaslighted. You know, totally my confidence and everything destroyed. Because I was 23. I was not expecting this in the slightest. Um, and I, until then, I had faith in society. I had trust in society. I, I, I had... I, I was having an adolescent, you know, basic rebellion, late adolescent rebellion, early adult crisis rebellion. So I was already becoming critical of society, but my basic position and feeling was one of unity with society, right? So I'd been a good middle class student, boy, very, very good my whole life. You know, apart from in the very, the preceding three or four years, in which I'd undergone, I was undergoing a process of intense um, questioning and reflection, and you know, doubt was creeping in about a lot of our, you know, hallowed, you know, bastions of respectability, etc., uh, institutions, you know, the quality of the education system, the the, the real level of civilization and humanity, and um, you know, human rights, etc., the level of compassion throughout society, all these things began to, you know, take a more, slightly more um, disapproving view of society, and I'd become at loggerheads in a way mentally with society, and I was um, not continuing with the normal progress of, you know, ascent, uh, and respectability within society. Instead, I was undergoing what Jordan Peterson might describe as, you know, crisis of meaning, nihilistic crisis. Um, this was a deep thinker, studied philosophy, and these things. 
to me were normal um, and superior, better than just fitting in and going along with the normal ascent of the so-called rat race. Um, but the doctors and the nurses, you know, they perceive all this as a mental illness. They come down on me like a ton of absolute bricks, shocking the hell out of me, uh, sending me into, you know, what would be, you know, in, in medical terms, it would be called post-traumatic stress uh, syndrome. Um, and... You know, and um, and you know, completely destroying you know my ascent, colliding with me as I was trying to take off. I was trying to take off and ascend to twenty three in my own way, which would have been a philosophical and literary adventure. Um, but they, you know, they come, they come bombarding into me. And, you know, sending my plane crashing, you know, just as it's taking off at that age. Um, and it's taking off its own way. Um, and leaving me, you know, lying half dead on the runway, you know, with more, more trouble to come from them for the next 12, 15 years. Um, so, <clears throat> um, so, 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 you know, so, um, by rights, you know, these people should be taken to court and put in prison for at least 15 years. Um, so I will continue to press for that. In fact, I'm asking for a new Nuremberg for the entire psych psychiatric profession because they literally have caused probably as much damage, not just to me, but to also millions of others over the last, at least over the last decades. Millions. Um, you know, so it's, it's a Nuremberg level... Uh, transgression that these people have um, enacted against our own home populations. But I don't particularly want to get into that. But on the other hand, you know, my whole point, my, 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 my you know, we have a duty. We have a due moral duty, not just to ourselves, but for society, you know, to see that justice and compassion reigns throughout society. And by rights, this is this should happen. But who's supporting me? You know, people barely like my tweets. I get you know a little, um, you know, a little bit of encouragement. But where's the mass outcry? Where's the support? I've been screaming my head off for over a year, two years. I don't know how to go about these things yet. So I'm, I'm just one fighting individual. He's barely made it this far. Where are all the doctors and lawyers, you know, with, with consciences? Where are all the ordinary members of the public who have a problem with, you know, the systematic torturing of their relatives? Where are the people with a bit of courage and belief in common humanity? Um, an insight, um, and to see that we don't enact chronic violence or threats of violence against just slightly mal already maladjusted but non-criminal, non-hurting anyone people in our society. 
making them much worse, making them much more dysfunctional for the sake of nothing, no benefits really apart from denial, the, ben the enjoyment of denial and shutting our eyes to the abuse, you know, um, the perpetuation of pathological system, you know, for its own sake to, you know, to um, prevent having to deal with it. Um, and the, you know, the, the salaries and careers of these and, and, and sadistic fetishes of these um, doctors and nurses and the drug companies associated, you know, uh, with them making huge leisure, resources and power for themselves by selling the public snake oil and poison in a way that's been somehow and tried in law as legally compulsory. Which is a modern day slavery, modern day serfdom, all around us today you know probably you know as, as numerous if not more numerous and you know as punishing as cruel degrading you know approximately the slightly different strange and different unusual on a similar level to, you know, the previous forms of oppression and slavery, like black slavery in America, um, that uh, we've had historically. And where is the outcry? Where are the so-called social justice warriors about the real slavery in their midst? You know, claim to care so much about about that kind of thing when it's in the past, but not when it's in the present. Um, and I don't know whether it's because people are afraid of it happening to them, or whether it's you know, pure, pure, you know, just um, lack of moral fiber and lack of intellectual and moral insights, sheer hurt mindedness, trendiness, and native, you know, human base, you know, vile inertia, moral inertia, um, or, or if not outright, you know, um, you know, subconscious sadism, um, you know, just lethargy, um, you know, towards all these people all around the country who are being locked away ignominiously and out of the out of the way wards where their misery and torment cannot be seen and cannot surface to the public. And you know, is it because people are afraid of it happening to them as well, or is it because just airheads? I don't know. Um, and, um, anyway, my point is not in itself to level more, you know, 
upset in, in the world. But I've been trying everything, you know, for the last 15 years. I tried 12 years of saying or very little. And that got me, you know, it, it, got, it took me 12 years to get anywhere with that. The last two years, I've gone the opposite. I've gone the opposite way. Because that's what I felt inside the whole first of the 12 years. You know, it's like a, a on the hob, you know, pan, putting a lid on it, you know, calling that medical health treatment, you know, for 12 years. To take the lid off, well, it either goes, it either explodes or, you know, in human terms, you know, the human being breaks down because it cannot understand, it cannot stand that much punishment, it cannot stand that much punishment without expressing itself. Um, and, but it has not got any official, you know, um, movement. Instead, you know, I will seem, you know, mad to a lot of people. You know, I, I'm very isolated in my demeanor, very unusual. And, um, because my life, my experiences are so different and so bad, and I have so much righteous anger, whereas they're just, and most of them are a bunch of, you know, um, you know, fakers, you know, they, and they, they have, they may have, you know, problems or things which have been inflicted upon them, but they're nowhere near so intense and so recent. And for them, life is just, you know, a mishmash of, you know, disappointment of, of, of um, you know, um, perhaps, you know, low level disappointment and every day, you know, why am I here? And, oh, that guy didn't speak to me like I wanted him to speak to me, you know. Um, and, you know, oh, those rich people over there, they, you know, they why do they have so much? We have so little. Um, whereas for me, I've had a very intense period of, complete and humanly inflicted agony and woe and destruction for 12 years of my, of my whole life which is all I've ever pretty so it's pretty much all I've ever known my whole adult life um, and uh, so this is very isolating makes me very very different to other people which makes me liable to, you know, endan be endangered again, to be, to be, um, swooped upon by these, this, this team of soldiers who are waging war against the, their own native population. Um, um, And it's difficult for me to defend myself. I do not feel safe. I do not feel confident in my freedoms that I should be able to take for granted. And if I could take them for granted, that would be making a measurable improvement in the quality of my life. And all it would take is for them to take the finger off the trigger. It wouldn't take anything positive. I don't want anything from them. I don't want any help from them. You know, apart from, I would, well, I do want compensation. Yeah, sure, I deserve it. But that's a different matter. I don't need any positive input from them. Just need them to back off, take the finger off the trigger. That alone would have made all the difference for the last 15 years. This is supposed to be a service. They have the they have the audacity to call themselves a mental service. You know, when all they're doing is stamping on your forehead with a boot, uh, you know, against your will, and you're pleading a protest, you know, telling you, as my psychiatrist said to me, 
when I was in my, you know, when, when I was in his clutches at my lowest ebb, you know, as he said to me, begging never works. You know, this is the, this is the level of uh, humanity, sensitivity, you know, on display, you know, for young people in, in time of crisis um, who are already at their lowest ebb and in the so-called care of the mental health NHS, you know, system. Um, so, um, so what, you know, all I'm really, you know, all I want, all I ask for is to back off because I see, you know, a, an illustrious, you know, happy life ahead for myself, not nowhere near as happy as it would have been, but, Um, but even after everything they've done to me, which is so much, and they've taken so much, and I'm still, you know, um, wanting to just go on with my life and, um, pursue my own endeavours and what remains of my ambitions. I mean, in terms of like the writing that I've been doing, you know, so I've released several books, which are published, I've published on Amazon. One contest has been published in journals over the last two or three years. And this is all I'm already asking for. Um, you know, well, as a minimum, but it's a minimum that would make a big difference. Um, and um, and so so the reason I make this video now is because I've recently been invite, invite, invited, invited for you know a, a so-called you know vaccination by the, the another branch of the NHS, South Wales NHS Health Department, and you know for me with my experience of the the health system, and my views on life and um, what I consider important, what I consider to be true, what I consider to be healthy, what I know to be healthy for myself to a large degree. Um, for me, this is, you know, a uncertain event. Do not trust these people, you know, as far as I can throw them, based on my experience. Um, and so, essentially, I I make this video, you know, um, um, you know, to add to all my other videos, you know, this time to issue, you know, just a small, you know, warning, you know, to the public that you know, I, I I'm, 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 I'm uh, ideologically opposed to. Um, the uh, the vaccines and the whole COVID thing as well, which is a whole separate issue, which of course one can go into. Um, but you know, I'm uh, firmly opposed to that. Uh, you know, totally just in totally totally justified because. As many people nowadays can see, not just mental patients, although if the mental patients were let free, there'd be, you know, many, many more people who were publicly protesting against this, this abomination of, of um, so-called medical care, um, totally artificial chemicals, uh, stuff pumped into your body which is empirically proven, you know, experienced by many, many people, 
you know, not to be good for you. And why the heck would it be? It's just it's some artificial stuff, which the same people who are wrestling our pants down and sticking jabs in our bottoms for nothing, you know, because we like poetry instead of, you know, earning money. Um, you know, they tell us that there's some kind of, you know, a scientific, you know, justification, you know, oh, um, oh, you inject a little weak version of the virus in your body, stimulates your immune system, and uh, um, and then you're resistant to the to the virus in future. And this will this will somehow uh, also protect other people, or you know, even if they're getting the vaccines, you need to get the vaccine to uh, to protect them. Or, uh, it's your social duty. Uh, just like we have a, a duty of care to rape your pants down and um, you know, and stick you in our whitewashed dungeon for the rest of your life indoor indefinitely. Um, um, yeah, well, it just doesn't play out, you know, um, the way that they tell tell you because they tell you this is going to be for your own good. This is going to help you. This is going to improve your life. You know, so you're sitting there, you know, you, you've been 50 years, you know, in, in hospital, chained down, you know, um, with jabs and needles all over your body, you know, um, grey hair, if you have any left, um, you know, your ankles swollen like melons and uh, um, you know, your, your stomach, you know, which was once like, you know, it was once Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah, now it's become like... Um, you know, um, I don't know, Marlon Brando, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, uh, Homer Simpson, um, um, yeah, um, yeah, so it's been 50 years, you know, you're, you're you know, you're 70 years old, you know, and you're saying, you know, when is this going to, you know, I'm sure this is going to improve my life sometime, you know, this is going to, you know, this, uh, you know, they, they told me this is, this is my own good, this is GDP cares. So, you know, when am I going to be that, you know, professor of, you know, poetry or, or you know, um, or, or, or philosophy, you know, when am I going to be that best-selling author that I dreamt of being when I was 23? I'm sure it's going to happen any year now, you know. Um, I'm 72, you know, it's, um, it's bound to happen now. Um, yeah, um. It just does not, you know, square with human experience. No matter what, no matter what, if, they, if no matter what, so-called scientific rationalizations or explanations they want to offer you, um, um, how stupid do you have to be? Just get them to take your hands off you, you know. Um, Because this does not fit in with our experience, um, and naturally, once if you have any, you know, ability, um, you know, as an independent thinker, as an intelligent adult. You know, it doesn't just end there, but um, you know your your worldview becomes precisely closer to the ones that they really are stigmatizing. Um, you know, which is the con you know conspiracy theorist you know kind of you know more mindsets or you know the oppositional mindset, the knowledge, the the judgment, the the the, the mature judgment that the whole system you know it can it's not just one. It's not just you. It's not just you. I'm not just like completely different to everybody else, though I am somewhat different. And may, and they will make me more and more different, more and more isolated, as they pick you off one by one in their offices. Um, but no, it's not just me. It is the system, and in reality, their their failure. It's not just an isolated failure. It's part of 
a general system of abuse and incompetence, or one or the other, or both. And this conclusion is not insane, it's logical and necessary for self-respecting thinker, mature adult, And yet it puts you in more danger from, you know, accusations from, from their side. But we have to stick to it anyway, because it's the truth. And backing off doesn't work, because, you know, I will try to be polite. I haven't rang them up and, you know, gone, you know, screaming down the phone at them you know why did you send me this letter this is harassment don't you realize what your your system has put me through for the last 15 years do you know this not do you not realize it's a triggering event for me this invitation and then the words near the bottom near somewhere on the back page you know you must attend this if you cannot if you don't attend you know what kind of invitation you know then you know has you know, the words you must attend um you know um, that you know, that pussyfooted, you know, that rhetoric and 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 um, you know, passive aggressive phrasing. Um, this is, you know, for the ordinary member of the public, it's okay if they go, if they believe in this, they want to buy in it. If they're not bought into the opposite, you know, well, they still get poisoned and they buy 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 the bad medicine, but. On the other hand, some of the medicine, you know, for people who believe in it, you know, it can be okay, you know, it can be okay, but it can also not be okay. Um, and I'm opposed to it. Don't believe in it. I believe it's bad. It would, it would do me, it would do damage to my conscience. And I believe, I'm, I'm, I know it would do, it would probably do damage to, um, to me, and to be chemically and biologically as well. As it will do to other people, but I don't, you know, I'm not, I, I can't help everyone. Yes, these people are fools for taking it, for going along with it. They're going with a going on with a worldwide system of oppression, systematic poisoning, which is evidently abusive, you know, to the to people who want to view it honestly, and it's evident incompetent, and it's you know, just appeals to experts, so-called expert scientists. With their, you know, their, their patronising, you know, scientific ex, so-called scientific explanations of what works. So just trust us, but you know, we can, you know, don't you know science? You know, we all know what a vaccine is. We learned in school. Um, don't you know science? Are you stupid? Are you a philist? Are you, um, are you ignorant? Are you stupid? Are you mad? Um, no, no, we just lost faith in the fairy stories that you told us. You know, you 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 um, you subjected us to against our will back in school as well. Um, and no, it's not us who are stupid or you know unscientific. Uh, or paranoid. It's you who is. You know, as dumb as a post, or as you know, as as black as coal. You know, your heart is black as coal. You don't care about the damage you're doing, and you're just trying to, you know, keep your keep your boots on its place on the you know the escalator. Escalate to nowhere, escalate to outfits. You know, the escalate you kinda of keep your boots on its on its step, on its staircase, on its level, on its elevator to nowhere, off a cliff, lemmings off a cliff, you know, at the cost of you know, kicking everybody else off the cliff who is around you. Um that is what you are.
that is what your state workers are, that's what your NHS workers are, that's what your doctors and nurses are, that's what your scientific experts are. That's what your politicians are. That's what the public who go along with it are. And that's the kind of thing you are. And you can do that, go along, keep doing that if you must. But we will not voluntarily cooperate with it, and you'll be much better off joining us. Um, um, and um, so, you know, I don't trust, you know, South Wales NHS. They sent me this letter. Hopefully, you know, I will try and, you know, just smile it off. Um, remain faithful, hopeful, um, good natured, content to know what I'm doing, and hope that they are not, you know, don't decide to become a, you know, deranged, you know, troop of, you know, chimpanzees trying to tear my pants down for my own good to inject me with their poison, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, again, um, I guess, but, but so I said, just make this video, you know, as a little warning to express clearly my adamant refusal, my opposition, or polite, as polite as I can be, and I am being extremely polite after what I've been through, my polite, polite refusal, you know, of their so-called medicine, you know, in case it becomes necessary to fight them again, you know. Um, but I'm hopeful that, you know, that won't be the case, you know, but which it shouldn't be. Um, and as long as they don't, you know, try to follow up this letter and my, my, my you know, my, my absence at their appointment, their beloved appointment, um... You know, which is supposed to be for me, it's supposed to be a service, not a dictatorship. Um, that's fine, I just won't think about it again. Uh, I won't speak about it again. You know, I assume the best. Um, But if they, <laughs> but you know, but it's it's total war, you know. If they, <clears throat> it's already total war, you know. Um, I, um, <clears throat> and um, um. I mean, I, you know, just to, you know, to, I don't know, I don't know the best way to go about this. You know, I, I was not a lawyer, you know, I don't have, I don't have, you know, particularly a friend who is a, you know, going to give me the best advice on how to deal with this man. I've been totally isolated. I've been, you know, in, in a wreck, you know, genuinely, you know, rendered mentally disabled from what they did to me for years and years and years. Cannot defend myself. So they keep my, you know, basically in a headlock, like the improbable headlock, you know, all these years. And leaving with only a fraction of the intelligence that I had at the beginning to defend myself with. Um, and only a fraction of the energy. So, don't know the best way to go about this. It's not my fault. You know, all I want is them to leave me alone. And, and to give me assurances that they will never you know, trouble me again. Or, you know, 
at least as much as the rest of the ordinary members of the public, which would be to remove the diagnoses that they had passed, to admit error about the medical notes. That would be to restore me to something like a parity with the rest of the public. Yeah. That is the very least that I... Um, insist upon. Um, uh, and... But yeah, so, you know, if they... If they do come for me again, you know, I will fight them. You know, legally and physically, if necessary, by any means. Um, um, I um, uh, and um, yeah, but I'm sure they'll be sensible not enough not to do that. Um, there's an, it's an invitation they sent me. It's just one little letter. You know, it'd be totally paranoid, obviously, totally unnecessary to worry myself or fret. They may even consider, no matter what I say, no matter the circumstances, nothing, no matter what I say or, you know, how I worry, there's no, there's no actual, you know, danger of them coming to, you know, come and lock me up and rip my pants down again, surely, you know, you know, it's just me getting a bit upset and worried because of the abuse and the trauma that I've suffered in the past. I uh, will, will, we we will try to agree with agree with that. Um, so everything should be all right. Um, and they can send their letters. They can send their invitations to their heart's content. Just as long as there's nothing, you know, behind it. There's nothing. There's no. Um, no, this is not really an invitation. This is this is a threat. You know, we are going to come and get you if you don't. You know, pay attention to it. If you don't write us back, you know, and if you don't basically come along eventually, you know, I don't have to deal with it. Do I write them back? Do I write them back? You know, polite letter saying no, thank you. Please save this for yourself. I don't believe in this. Is that what I do? Could do it, but I don't know whether that would just antagonise them more. You know, I don't. Maybe it's best to ignore. So I don't want. I don't. I. You know. I shouldn't receive this letter in the first place. So my 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 approach is. Oh, I just. You know. Just pretend it didn't happen because. You know, if there's their service, you know. Um, there's no problem anyway. You know, I shouldn't have to worry about them coming to kidnap me and rip my pants down. You know, it's um. But I do. You know, I feel a palpable emotional. You know. <laughs> um, concern there very deep because the trauma is immense and and if they were really you know a a system which were there to help my mental health they would already be sensitive about these things they wouldn't even send these letters which are against my beliefs which They should know, um, be aware of, and be respectful of already. They should know how triggering this kind of thing would be for me. But given everything I said, In reality, although they claim it, they, the sane person, the intelligent person, would not anticipate that they would be more a moral organization enough to you know, to be to be hypersensitive in, in in any way, or even when it's called for, you know. Um, uh, even though our whole country is saturated with these. You know, these trigger warnings for people who have suffered far less violent uh, invasions, destructive, prolonged chronic invasions and destructions of their previous 
mental integrity and state than I have, you know. Um, get you saturated with these trigger warnings, but <clears throat> um, so okay, so you know they send me this letter. I just. Uh, Ignore it, because I don't know what I should do. Should I write to them? Should I phone them up? They say phone them up, but for me, phoning them up is already a traumatic experience. I don't want to speak to these people. I don't want contact with them. I don't approve of what they do. And you draw their attention, maybe that makes them come on to you. You know? Um, I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know how to deal with these people. Nothing has probably worked very well so far. I don't want another 12 years of patience with them, you know, having them right on my backs again because of anything, you know. Any contact with them, you know, questioning, you know, do, you know, am I going to do something to make them destroy my life indefinitely, you know, for another decade? That's the situation they put in. That's the psychological treatment they give me. That's the psychological empathy and sensitivity, level of sensitivity and care that I get from, from them. I have to put up with, which is much worse than any ordinary member of the public would have to go through. Um, yeah, this is, this is, this is an open daylight. Whereas my resource to you know, to correct this mistake, this error. I've issued a complaint. I made, I've actually finally made a formal complaint, something to one of the, you know, the South Wales NHS bodies. Very, very reluctantly because, you know, like I say, I'm, I am disabled, mentally disabled, I'm vulnerable. I don't want to attract the attention. Any of them. I don't believe in any of these parts of the system. I don't believe it was a purely localised issue. Systematic bailing, systematic oppression, systematic abuse. I don't even want to, I don't want to attract the attention. But I issue a you know a lodge an email making a complaint looking for some kind of I don't know justice on this issue. Um, um, and, and the same applies here, you know, I don't know what to do. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to cause trouble with them. I'd be, I was, you know, I don't want to pick a fight with them. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I have, I, this is what I've become, this is what I do, I, I've become a psychiatric critic, critic, you know, this is my, this is my intellectual background now, this is my, this is my expertise, this is my field, so this is what I do now, you know, I write poetry, so my poetry is very anti-psychiatric, I also talk about other issues, and I criticise psychiatry heavily, you know, this is what I do, this is what I've become, this is what I've turned into, and this is what I believe in, you know, to a large extent, but I didn't pick this fight. Um, and if I am going to be in a fight with them, I need support. I need people to come and fight with me, which they're not. But we're supposed to, you know, have free speech in our country. We're supposed to be able to critic. We're supposed to be a country which embraces critics, encourages even, you know, this is intellectual debate, important to the well-being of our Commonwealth, which it is. 
And so it should not be, not be a problem like criticizing them heavily on social media, etc. etc. And um, it should also not be a problem that you know I I spread unusual religious beliefs um, and uh, I have basically I have basically developed a truly mad persona, you know, on uh, uh, as as part of my career now, willfully. Uh, partly willfully, partly, like I say, inflicted upon me. Um, yeah, you know. Um, um, and I don't, you know, I, I don't expect or deserve grief over that. Although it puts me in danger as well, you know, because... These people have no appreciation for, well, they have no institutional education or preparation, you know, towards appreciation for um, eccentrics, as they would call them, or as we would, we would agree to be called. You know, we can bear being called an eccentric, you know, a bit, um, but I mean, they have no preparation, particularly, you know, towards respect for flamboyant personalities, but in fact, systematically degrade and destroy them um, uh, and disparage and uh, label them ill. Um, um, but I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm very happy with it. I'm happier than I've ever been. And that should be more than sufficient uh, for them if they're a genuine system of help and service and care. Um, and and I will, you know, like I say, happy to try things alone. I don't believe I'd be doing a public service by getting myself injected with their vaccines. I think I'd be doing a disservice. And I would be doing a disservice because I am right and they are wrong. But even if I'm not right, I still have the right to be wrong, to make mistakes to make mistakes like this. So I'm right either way. Even if I'm wrong, I'm right. In everything that's happened to me. So they're trying to force themselves on me. And they're wrong. Um, so... You know, I care, I care deeply about my health, about the integrity of my body and my mind. Very self-protective. I'm very fastidious about my poetry, my writing, my health, my presentation in my own way, my career, my reputation, very conscientious and care deeply about all of these things. I'm passionately doing the best that I can to protect myself. And, um, so we will see if there's, a, if there's anything like a free country, which, you know, I hope it is. I'm, you know, I, as I understand it, you know, there's still, you know, plenty of opportunity for people to sit through the cracks and, you know, to basically have let, have some freedom, personal choice in our society if they're not unlucky enough, you know, to step into one of the traps. Um, there's a lot of waiting, you know, around, you know, in doctor's offices, etc., etc. So, you know, I'm, um, it should be, it should not be a problem. I just... Uh, do I ignore them or do I phone them? They say that you should phone them, but you know, going along with them hasn't helped me very much before. It took me 12 years to get out of their clutches.
Do I phone them? I don't want. I don't. I shouldn't even have to phone them because I didn't ask for this letter. I didn't approve of what they're doing. I didn't have respect for them because they've not shown respect for me in the past. I could do. I would do out of respect and politeness. But I don't want to attract the attention. It would be traumatic for me. I'm supposed to be the patient. Uh. So it should not be a big deal, you know. Um, they sit if they if, if they're a sane civil institution, they call me back, at most, or send another letter, suggesting another appointment, and at most, you know, they try to get my ear somehow. Um, you know, ring me up, at most. Ask me about it. I tell them, no, no, I didn't reply. I didn't go to the appointment because I don't believe in this. Um, thank, thank you. Um, I suppose, but um, thank you, but no, thank you. Um, um, I reserve my right to refuse medical treatment like legally our citizens generally should or can, I think, still do. And that is going to be me. I'm reserving the right. I'm, I'm, act, I'm activating the right to refuse this. And, um, and if you have any problems with that, you know, please take it up with my lawyer. Um, but don't try that because you've done enough damage already. Um, 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 yeah, so it's unlikely I'll phone them up, but um, they can phone me if they're civil and that's all they want to do, and uh, I will tell them no thank you. And if we're still living in a free country, they will leave it at that. <clears throat> so, like I say, you know, to, to just to recap, you know, I'm Max James Louis. I live in South Wales, um, UK, United Kingdom. Uh, I've written some books criticizing psychiatry and um, written some poetry. I've been published in some journals, won a contest. And today I'm just, you know, 26th of April 2021. I'm just issuing you know, this video as a little, you know, and a warning, an official warning statement. Because um, I don't know what else to do, you know. Um, you know, just that I have been re engaged with the South Wales NHS. She's sending me a letter about COVID vaccines, like COVID 19, which. I strongly do not, I, I strongly don't want to take part in and I do not believe in, I believe it will be bad for my health and I'm confident it will be bad for my health. Um, and I ask anybody out there if I do disappear, if I do end up somehow being, um, you know, wrestled into one of their whitewashed hospitals, so-called hospitals, you know, and held there again and treated against my will in any way. And I pray that people will come to 
campaign strenuously against that for my freedom and in fact get some retribution and justice against this system, this tyrannical system. And I wish that for everybody else out there who does not want these vaccines, who does not want any mental health treatment. Um, pray that we can have a movement together. We can help defend one another and the rest of the public. Um, from ever having to deal with these kind of um, pushy so-called health workers and their respective bureaucrats and departments. Um, so that we can ha have breathing, breathe clean air again as a society during a modest sovereignty over our lives and freedom, make our own medical decisions. Let us have a movement to protect everybody who has not already fallen to this medical regime. I've been trying my best for years, particularly the last couple of years. Limited support, don't know what else to do. I'm very, very sorry for all the people who have already been injected against their will, or the, the doubling in detentions in the mental health system, oh, probably over the last year or two. It's absolutely tragic and it breaks my heart, breaks my mind, breaks my soul. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> Nobody helps me. <laughs> I'm only barely keeping it together myself. I know there are people who are out there who want more, you know, who want, who want the movement on this issue to defend themselves and defend others. Some people would agree with me to some extent. And they will probably blame me for not being more successful. I'm barely surviving and I'm already doing a lot and but let's let's start taking it further up, upwards let's let's really know that this is very very important. It's not just a childish tantrum that we're throwing here, any of us. This is absolutely the most important thing for any of us or any part of human life on this planet. We must not back off or, you know, put ourselves together and pull up our trousers, you know, and shuffle off um, you know, slightly apologetic um, you know, and, you know, grow up. No. No, um, need to get serious.
we need to stand by our guns at the very least and Yeah, support each other. Keep speaking out, all of us. More people need to do it. If anybody isn't already is watching this video, please join us. Please defend people who are being totally degraded, poisoned against their will. Why was we, was we made life a misery for one another? Hasn't the past been bad enough already? These poor victims, these people. Who have had it bad enough already. Now what little dignity they have is being taken from them. That what how what hell is to being taken from them? Not in a bang, but with a whimper. But it should be with a bang. It should be with a huge bang. And even if there won't be a bang, you know, about this issue anymore, because I don't know why, but the momentum has been lost. The, the moment, maybe the moment has been lost or my voice has been lost. Let's be just as indignant, you know, in the future and and compassionate towards those that are being mistreated in the mental health system, irrespective of any COVID vaccines, anything like that, let's stop making people's life worse when they were young and already miserable and come from bad families. Don't dedicate your life to pleasing authority and making money from a wrong system, but acquiring useless items and spending money on computer games, playing computer games, you know, and um, treating ourselves in restaurants and cars. Lavish homes. <laughs> Even books, you know. And don't use your energy, and don't watch TV, don't consume endless media on the internet and films and etc. etc. I just, just, you know, try to talk kindly to these people who have been locked away and treated like animals for years, or would, would are in very much in grave danger of it happening to them. When they're young in the future, just put your investment, you know, of energy in the people who need it, people you can help. And certainly, try to stop their people from making their lives worse. And this will be much, much more enriching for for everyone, for you. Or it will be equally enriching. 
but potentially much more so. So that we you know we're marching down the streets you know, in clarity, health, you know, and good cheer. Um, and turn you know our lives into the you know the beautiful movies that we see on the screens with their ups and downs, rather than just being held down all the time in these modern day whitewashed dungeons. Called which you call hospitals. Don't hold them down. Let them go up and down. Let them go up and down. Not holding them down all the time. For no reason. Let them be up and down. And there is no better cause in society. There's nothing that needs doing. There's, we're not marching forward to any great other area of progress. This is the progress. This is the domain of progress, which we should be doing. This is the great march forward. There is this. This is where it is. There's nothing else that needs doing. Just free the prisoners. And you know, breathe a huge sigh of relief as a society, and certainly they will, the people who've been locked away will. And if they don't thank you, then so what? Because they've had it bad enough for long enough already, you know, you don't can't deserve much you can't expect much thanks from these people, you can't expect much out of them. Do it for them, not for you. So you've already ruined them for ruining and ruining their lives for years and years and years. Um, and Um, and this is the great unconquered continent, you know, that then it awaits the new roads. To you know, to lift up his his boots. Proudly, you know, in dignity, with his back arched, onto the step of, uh, onto the step, you know, or the stone, lying by his foot, you know, and take it off, the heads, of the mental patients. <clears throat> um.
Yeah, so it's it's too late for me, you know. I'm my I'll be ha happier if this happens. And, but it's late, mainly too late for me. Uh, but it's do enormous good for other people. Do enormous good for society. For humanity. So many people. His lives will be transformed from constant grey and blood red and you know, blackest night. Um, Some, something of great relief, good cheer. Um, more than we can imagine, either of us can imagine. Because we don't, probably, don't know how to convey that anymore. We've lost, we, we don't, we don't, we're not, it's not, it's not our lives right now. And we don't have the heights ahead of us either. But many people do. They have the lows and the heights ahead of them, potentially. But if we don't act intelligently and morally, then they only have the lows. And the lows are very, 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 very,